Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is the show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Heroclix. It's uh, late and cold in Kansas City. Yeah, because it's like 2 in the morning when I'm recording this. And uh, it's cold outside. The heat is up to like 75 degrees, but it feels like it's like 50 degrees in the house. And I'm by a vent, and I have a throw on me. So, uh, yeah, climate change. It can go crazy on you. Yeah, that's uh, that's the best way of putting it. Anyway, uh, just some interesting uh, beginning housekeeping uh, issues. Uh, one, I know some people may have started to notice that I do not have the sp- the song at the end anymore and it's sort of sad but pretty much I have permission from the artists but I keep getting flagged by YouTube (coughs) and because of that uh, pretty much every episode that the the Spider-Man song appears in um, has been flagged by YouTube so uh, until I can get that resolved with YouTube I'm not going to do any music I was planning on having uh, a new year, new music, uh, but the gentleman that did the audio for the quarry, I can't get a hold of him right now. Um, and he stopped working at my place of uh, business that I occupy, the uh, Tarje, as some call it. So uh, that makes things more interesting for me. Anyway, uh, sort of moving on uh, to uh, today's main topic. I've gotten a lot, and I do mean a lot, of communication sent to me in the last few weeks about team bases. I think all of a sudden I've become the patron saint of team base play. And uh, don't get it twisted. I'm, <laughs> I'm, you know, I did my best, and, and team bases are tough, uh, but I don't think that they're the the zippity doodah zippity yet day uh, of the meta um, but but here's the thing I, I will say if you up your play um, and you take some time to, to study uh, you can learn uh, the advantages and disadvantages of team bases so since I've gotten so much feedback and uh, questions we're just going to go and talk about team bases today and I'm going to bring up team base theory, what's good now, what's good in the future, and uh, more along the lines of what your thought process needs to be when, when selecting a team base. So let's, let's start off with uh, your thought process when selecting a team base, and then we'll look at the, the current and then the future uh, tech that, that needs to develop. Uh, first off... I have to say, you have to to break up team bases into team titans and everything else. Um, The main reason I say you have to look at team titans and everything else is because the designers in team at at the stage of team titans made a horrible mistake, and that horrible, horrible, horrible mistake was allowing you to have two things on the asset dial at at the beginning. (laughs) Like, you didn't have to roll or anything. You just had two heads just showing. Okay, so... Team bases really sort of steer away from that later on. Uh, from Wolverine and X-Men. And I'm betting the Avengers and uh, the X-Men team base that we're going to get at the end of AVX for prizes are going to do the same thing. They're, they're just going to steer away from um, that whole entire thing. The... So, why is this a big issue? Well, first off, when you get a head popping up on your asset dial, that head is essential to what your first play is. So, let's uh, let's take, for example, um, going to... Do, 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 picking at random. Okay, let's, let's pick uh, New Teen Titans uh, at full dial. Okay, full dial... You have the the Teen Titan Tower there, and you see it, and it's awesome. Okay, so you have that, and what's sort of funny is 
I could probably like actually play this team base uh, because I have like all the characters for it except for the team base and the characters itself. And I, I slept on it, so that was my fault. Um, anyway, so let's let's look at what your team base heads give you. And I'm going to look at that before I look at traits and all this other stuff because we have to look at what your asset dial does first because that's really your core. And I, and I hate to say it, your asset dial is more important than you determining what your stats in what your starting line of how many points you're going to play the team base because you need to know what you're working with starting off okay so let's look at the new team Titans. you start off with starfire and robin okay so starfire gives you defend and flight ability and Robin gives you the new Teen Titans can use Outwit and only adjacent characters can target them with Outwit. Okay, so so t right there you get Outwit protection in Defend. Now, when you look at their dial, you look at the Vet dial and it's like, oh wow, a 19 Defend, that's awesome. But then you also have to look at a 19 Defend, I am paying 500 points for this. Okay, so that's that's something else. Like, oh, okay, a nineteen, def uh, eighteen defend. I'm paying four hundred to three hundred points for that. So you you have to actually be honest with yourself. Is this worth it? Okay. Now you can say like, oh, what about all the other stuff that's on there? Yeah, you have all the other cool stuff. All the other cool stuff is random. Like, you can't control that. You have to look at it like your asset dial, like any other clicks. You have to look at your, what do I start off with? And the fact that you get a 7 range outwit, and you get defend, uh, and the ability to fly is pretty good because you're grounded. And unlike what people think, team bases do not ignore hindering terrain. Yes, team bases do not ignore hindering terrain. They ignore elevated terrain. But they do not ignore hindering terrain. So if you are grounded and you are in hindering terrain for any of your squares, your movement is halved. And that's something a lot of people forget and let slide that team bases do not automatically ignore hindering terrain. So that flight right there is very important because it allows you to ignore hindering terrain for movement purposes. Now let's look at the dial. Okay, this is this is our next thing. We're starting to look at stats. Charge, 11 attack, 4 damage at 500 points. While being about, what, 14 clicks deep is not bad. That still sort of suck uh, because you're on charge. Now you might say like, hey, hey, wait, wait, don't, don't be like that. You know, there's, there's other options that um, you can have because New Teen Titans... If you get on Kid Flash, new Teen Titans can use hypersonic speed, and when they do, modify their speed value by plus two. So that's that's really good, right? Right? And I would say no, that's not good because again, you you get hypersonic speed. Guess what, son? That's one of your power actions. That's one of your power actions. That's yeah. So you need to like watch that. So flight. I can use that with a move action. Okay. So that's that's a big thing. Defend, I just have to stand there. And outwit is a free action. And and having outwit protection, considering I don't I'm not power cosmic or anything like that. Uh or let me rephrase that. Um rephrase that. Uh, the reduction of a of a chance of someone getting an outwit out off on me is really low. Okay. So Right, right there, we can see that the the asset dial is going to determine how we're going to roll. But also, when we look at the stats, man, having charge and I have the seven range is is rough. It's really rough. I'm not starting with running shot or anything awesome. I'm starting with charge. So the full point dial, even though I'm getting this 19 defense and I have that defend really sets me up for this I hate to say it this very close combat based offense 
So that means that if I'm in this close combat based offense, I'm going to be I'm going to have to base other figures. So that means this defend that I'm getting starting off may not be as good as I think it is. Okay? So that's that's something else. Now if I have a whole lot of hindering terrain, I really don't want to spin the dial because I need to fly. And any square I pass through where there's hindering terrain or I'm on hindering terrain, it's just going to literally stop me and and when you're paying that many points you can't afford that. So you can you can look at that then you look at the experience dial and you get plasticity and a 10 attack starting off. That sucks for as many points as you're spending. And yes, you have close combat expert, but that sucks. Okay, and then you look at your rookie version and you have running shot, psychic blast, and two special powers. That's a lot better. But now you have to ask yourself, is that starting dial of defend actually worth it? And if I'm playing like a 600 point game and I have a whole lot of energy shield deflection and defend, that might actually be good and then I can get a benefit from the defend. But otherwise, that's not it. The outwit is always useful. And the outwit protection is always sort of useful. Next up, let's look at the powers. Um, first off, uh, you have a trait, Titans Together Forever. When all team members are attached, new team Titans can't be target of mind control or penetrating psychic blast. This is a big deal because if your opponent is Brother Voodoo, that mind control protection is awesome. Uh, if your opponent is Omen, that mind control protection is awesome. And it really discourages you, in, in some cases, from using solo adventure, which is sort of sad. But it, it, let's call it for what it is. The main goal is to keep all the characters on, on the team base so that you can avoid getting wrecked really bad by Scotty's Warbot. Okay, next up is training every weekend at Titan's Tower. New Team Titans can use toughness and combat reflexes. So instead of having like awesome invulnerability starting off, I have toughness and combat reflexes. Now, this is sort of good and sort of bad. It's sort of good because I can get up really close on my opponent. This is sort of bad because now I'm, when it really matters, I have freaking running shot. So that's a problem, and guess what? If someone gets on me and they have outwit, they're just going to outwit it anyway. Because Robin only protects me from outwit from non-adjacent figures. Okay, then there's the damage power. Not sidekicks anymore. At the beginning of your turn, choose one. Outwit, perplex, or probability control. New Team Titans can use that power this turn. Now, if you're playing them on a theme team, guess what? You already have prob. And then... Robin is giving you outwit, so the only thing you need is perplex, and now you have the Holy Trinity. So, so now you're at a good spot because you can say, hey, I have prob, perplex, and outwit at a seven range. <clears throat> and running shot, psychic blast, toughness, close combat, reflexes. Starting off. And if you're building a Teen Titans team around that, that's pretty good. And then you're also looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You're looking at 10 clicks of health. So that's not bad. That's not bad. You're paying 300 points for 10 clicks of health, having the Holy Trinity, and running shot, psychic blast, 4 damage. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this, and, and again, I know some people might say, like, well, Dark Logos, you're dissecting the new Teen Titans a bit long. Bear with me. Okay. So we noted that the, the, the vet version of this dial sort of sucks. Sucks hardcore. Okay, The experienced version of the dial sucks hardcore as well. The rookie is pretty much the gold mine. As this, that's where you're digging. Okay, Alright, now, here's the problem. Alright, now we're going into the crux of what is allowing you to have this this dynamic Swiss Army Knight offense <clears throat> and that is uh, solo adventure so let's let's break it down um, at higher point levels new Teen Titans coming in at 500 points is only going to get 
three actions because it's 200 in every fraction thereof. So with three actions, it's it's not that good that at the vet level. And then we are looking at the experience level. You're going to get two actions. And again, I'm sorry, it's not that good. And the rookie level, we're going to get two actions, which is our moderately fine, because that means that you can move up 10 and then running shot 5 and ping somebody with, you know, 5 damage psychic blast, possibly after a perplex. Okay, but when we go back and look at solo venture, we start looking at the characters that would be on that team base. So let's start off with Robin. And Robin on that team base, he, on the vet, we get some cool stuff. And uh, again, we have to say to him, like, oh, well, are we going to pop Robin off? And the chances are not very likely. But if we are, why are we popping Robin off? Well, on the vet level, we do get uh, bat tricks at the beginning of your turn. Choose Robin Keys to incapacitate this turn or Rob Q's Smoke Cloud as a free action. Well, here's a problem. At the beginning of your turn doesn't, won't happen when you pop him off. So him at the vet level and doesn't do you any good. And, and the leadership is nice and having Batman ally TA and Teen Titans is nice because you can heal up your guys, but really it's not going to help you as, as much as you want it to. So that's a problem, okay? So the vet levels out, and then you're looking at the experience, and you get outwit. But guess what? You had outwit with Robin on the dial, and then your rookie level, you're still sort of stuck. You're going to have to wait until your next turn before you can use bat tricks. So Robin, we sort of designate, stays permanently on the dial, and there's nothing wrong with that. And you have to decide. Um, with, with characters, with team bases, you have to have three characters on the dial, unless it says otherwise. Like your outlaws, uh, your um, what was it? Your outlaws and Trinity of Sin are the exceptions. So, um, what what was it? There was a uh, Hellfire Club and Brotherhood, I think. Those team bases, I, I you're only able to pop off one figure, so. Anyway, so let's look at Kid Flash. Kid Flash is very good. Kid Flash on the vet level gives us Perplex, and that's nice, okay. Um, on the experience level, he doesn't give us much. And then on the rookie level, we have Faster Than Flash. Fast is Kid Flash can use Phasing Teleport when he does after actions resolve. He may make a range, uh, sorry, he may make an attack as a free action that causes knockback and gives a hit character an action token. So that is nice that he has that and you have access to it on the rookie level that special power but you're you're left with a lot of I hate to say it sore taste in your mouth or not sore taste sour taste so we can really look at that that special power while it's sorta of cool your stats are sorta of crap when you pop them off at the rookie level so what we're really seeing is that uh, Kid Flash is really good at the vet level, um, and he's going to give us hypersonic speed and perplex, and a 10 attack, which is sort of okay, but it's not mainly damage. It's it's there for the fact that he comes off and the team base has a free perplexer, so that's cool and all. But we always have to remember that the team base, in and of itself, has charge starting off. So if he pops off, the team base doesn't get hypersonic speed. So we, we, we have to weigh those things. Like, okay, am I willing to roll the dice and keep going until I get Kid Flash to have hypersonic speed? Or can I pop him off and get that perplex? So those are things that you have to value and, and decide. Because uh, if you're like, man, I'm really hoping for that Kid Flash Starfire you know, click on the asset dial and you don't hit it and I'm like well sorry guess what you're in trouble okay so let's uh, move on to uh, Beast Boy actually no um, let's not let's uh, let's do uh, where is it 
Changeling. It's Changeling. It's that's because I was I said the wrong name. Okay. Uh, Changeling pops off, and we we start to get some goodness here. He's sixty points. He gives us plasticity, so we can tie up a target. And he gets shape change at vet level. At experience level, we get earthbound, which sucks because he starts off flying. Um, which also means that he could taxi some other characters around. And we get super strength, and we get a special power, which is one form to another. Changeling can use charge and close combat expert. Uh, when he can use the improved movement, uh, sorry, when he uses charge, he can use improved movement, ignores characters. Which is sort of, eh, okay. Um, but the big deal is that he has... Uh, access to charge A and also access to super strength which technically his damage can be up to 4 um, just with the, with the heavy now his attack values suck they just do so you have to accept that um, at a 9 then you go look at the rookie level and then you're getting willpower and blades which is more gamble than anything else alright uh, then you have morph beast boy give changeling a move action uh, or a close combat action that deals no pushing damage after actions resolve, replace him with any character with this trait on the same click. Now, where this gets funky is you pop off this Beast Boy at 60 points. You could bring in another Beast Boy, but I don't know if you can merge that new Beast Boy character on after you turned into you know whatever you turn into so it, you know stay on top of that and get a rules uh, rule the rules arbiter ruling before you play that and you go down that route um, truthfully I feel that uh, there's no real reason for you to pop off Beast Boy and then have him turn into like the other forms um, initially um, now again you're adding layers upon layers uh, so if you do you need to be fully aware of like all the problems that are going to be generated so anyway that is Beast Boy and then we're going to move on to Starfire I mean that's Changeling sorry Changeling so move on to Starfire now Starfire is really your muscle okay so if you pop starfire off what you're saying is mm, forget flying which changes your avenues of of fighting completely and then you're saying hey guess what I am going to be using starfire to bust a cap in my opponent's buttocks uh, the vet level starfire is awesome because she's running shot to dual target uh, energy explosion uh, she has defensive power which starfire can use energy shield deflection and invulnerability and shape change uh, she has a trait called true love when starfire is adjacent to a friendly character named nightwing modify nightwings defense values by plus one so that's really awesome um, it, yeah it's really awesome because you can boost up a nightwing uh, at the other end of this, hold up, wait, am I looking at the wrong Starfire? I, nope, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, she just like nukes down stuff really well. And she's a lot of follow-up damage, definitely for the vet that's a charge, you know, sort of tactic. And then you have Starfire, which is a very range tactic. So that's that's a cool thing. We look at the experience value, then she turns into, hey, guess what, guys? I'm range combat expert, Starfire. And that's okay. That's okay. And then we look at... The rookie level, she turns into, I'm a charging three-click warrior, watch me roar, uh, Starfire, and ends with Pulse Wave. So overall, Starfire is a good chunk of your offense, which sucks because you need her so your team base can fly. You just do. 
that sucks. That sucks hardcore. Okay, so so just keep that in mind. And, and I know some people might think like, okay, well, this seems a, a bit frustrating, Dark Logos. You're pretty much telling me that most of my options pulling off on this team base is not that good. Well, okay, let's wait. Let's wait. All right, so now let's look at Cyborg. Okay, Cyborg comes in at 103 points. What does he do? He gives us enhancement at the vet level and running shot and six range. That's not bad to an attack. At the experience level, he gives us side blast and perplex. And then he also gives us, on the rookie level, running shot and enhancement. Now, so I could say, hey, Cyborg is a good character to pull off because he boosts our damage and he provides support options to us. Now let's look at what Cyborg does for the team base. Cyborg, new team titans can't be the target of opposing characters' probability control. This is situational. So you can say, like, hey, if Prob is messing me up, then, hmm, you know what? Maybe it's a good idea that I pop off Cyborg. Okay? So Cyborg is... Is, is up there on the list about being popped off. Okay, next up is Raven. And Raven is awesome uh, because on the vet level we get Prob, which is, which is nice because, hey, if we're a team base and we're theme, then we get Prob. So having another Prob on the side is sort of cool. Uh, the Darkest Magic... Um, she gets that on. Oh, never mind. She gets that on her weird click. Anyway, uh, so you get the her attack power. I see your fears. When Raven is attacked by a character with one or more action tokens, she can use super senses. And that's not bad, but it's not that great either. And uh, Daughter of Trigon, Raven can use barrier. Uh, when this click is revealed, stop turning the dial. Roll a d6. On a result of five through six, turn dial uh, turn Raven to click seven, which is sort of nice, um, because with the team base, <clears throat> you have to understand that on a team base, the moment this click is revealed on your rookie level, oh, actually you don't get it on your rookie level. I apologize. The moment this is revealed, um, if if you move to it, if you're on your vet or experienced, you can just bring her back and then pop her out again the following turn and oh I healed Raven two clicks I have prop and barrier okay and other cool thing is Raven on the vet gives us prop and on the experience gives us support so we have the ability to heal back up and if we get back to vet level guess what when we merge Raven back on it heals Raven so technically Raven is probably the Oh my gosh, things are getting bad. I better pop her off while I'm still on the experience level character. Because when we get to rookie, we get I see your fears, phasing teleport, willpower, two damage, and and prob with a six range. So that's that's really not good. We don't like that. Definitely if I'm popping you off, you're 96 points. You can say, well, Dark Logos, what about the Mystics? Yeah, you yeah, what about the Mystics? They hit you once on that rookie level and she's dead. So no. Okay, so we got we to gotta be careful about that. Then we'll look at the asset dial because the asset dial is the core. Raven, when new Teen Titans are not adjacent to an opposing character, they can use regeneration. Well, if I've taken damage and I really look at things, I'm like, hmm, and I land on Raven, her being off the dial can be beneficial. And here's why, even with if we land on Raven on our asset dial. And here's why. Raven off of the asset dial means that if we're on healing, we can heal, merge her back on, actually, uh, yeah, merge her back on with Team United and Reunited, and then, uh, when possible, regen. Okay. So if Raven has, like, two tokens on her after we, you know, push to heal, just put her back on there. You know, we took the power action, the power actions to bring, uh, use Team Reunited, and then, uh, you know, the following turn, our power action is to regen. There we go. So, having Raven on, on the team base is really awesome. Um, 
e either off or on the team base. So that's good to know. So finally, there's uh, Wonder Girl, and uh, she has trying to lead by example. Wonder Girl can use leadership, but only if she has one or more action tokens. And that sort of sucks. But at 135 points, she's taking tokens off of most of your characters. Um, she's taking, but she's not taking off your main cannon, which is uh, Starfire, which sucks. That part sucks. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, as we go on, uh, her starting attack power is really good at the vet level with charge, but you already have a charge quaking figure, which is your team base. So another charge quaking figure really isn't that helpful. The four damage is nice, but you've paid four damage for your team base. Then uh, here's the flurry uh, on the experience level. Now this is really good if you're able to uh, place her uh, right next to your opponent when you do solo adventure and then she goes and flurries. So that's really good. Her experience dial we see a, 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 a 9 attack which isn't that great but for rookie levels that's pretty good and again the flurry so she has a pot potential to do 6 damage and then she goes into plasticity and close combat expert at a 2 base damage she also has the magic bullets uh, sorry magic bracelets I'm tired a little bit uh, wonder girl can use invulnerability and energy shield deflection so that's nice so she can knock some of that damage down now what does this mean when we see something like this. This means that this character is designed to be our offense, okay, when we're doing solo venture. It's supposed to be a supplemental one-two punch, uh, so to speak. And this is what I really, really love about team dials, is that if you pay close attention to the actual team dial, the team dial will always give you a character on, on a certain level that will complement or repeat the action that you just did because it's technically that character or that character being mainly in control or mainly represented in the team dial. The thing I don't like about the Teen Titans team dial is that it primarily represents Starfire and Wonder Girl. It doesn't really represent anybody else really well. Um, and that part sucks. Okay, but anyway, sort of going back and looking at Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl on the asset dial gives the team base super strength and the flight ability. So, okay, here we go. Here's our, our second instance of getting flight ability. And I know some of you were like, why don't you just read that in the beginning? You would have known. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, uh, so we have Starfire and she gives us a flight ability and then we have Wonder Girl and she gives us a flight ability so let's let's just look at how many times that we get this flight ability on our asset dial so we have it on click one okay then we have it on click three okay then we have it on click six alright so we're up to three uh, then we have it on uh, click nine sorry click eight and nine so we're up to five click eleven that's six um, click fourteen that's seven clicks seventeen and eighteen that's nine click eighteen that's ten so half of the time we have a chance of getting flight and then we also add in um, what was it uh, the fist symbol which allows you to use any of the other characters uh, powers but then you get to rotate so the there's a certain phrase that they call it so anyway so that ups it to, to 1 2 3 4 14 so only six times on the asset dial do we have a chance of not having flight if we have either uh, Starfire or uh, Wonder Girl on the base. So wh where is our problem lying in? We're, we're pretty much seeing that no matter what Starfire and Wonder Girl are our main damage. So you have to be very very careful about how you're doing solo adventure and how you're doing um, 
uh, your spinning your asset dial and, and where your placement is with your team. So in particular, and, and again, I'm, I'm trying to show you my thought process. We're looking at situations where how do I use each piece and how do I use them properly? And I would say, all right, the first thing that you have to designate is where are your major problems? Well, you have no anti-stealth. You're very melee heavy. Well, guess what? Um, how are we going to solve for our stealth problem? Uh, we're going to solve for, our self, solve for our stealth problem with Wonder Girl. And we're going to move up, and, and no matter what dial we're on, and we're going to use Solo Adventure after our movement action so that we can drop Wonder Girl right next to the stealth threat, and she can attack the stealth threat. She can either quake it out of stealth, or she can uh, flurry the character in stealth or just hit it really hard. So that's an advantage. Then you can say, well, what if I'm dealing uh, with a, uh, a spread out uh, swarm team type of situation? Well, then we can say, yay, yeah, Starfire really helps with energy explosion because swarm teams need to have some sort of formation. Then we can say, well, what if my team base is just dominating and they just need some more oomph? Well, uh, that's real easy. Kid Flash on the vet level starts with Perplex. Um, and if we push him, um, when he, after he comes off on the experience level, we can go into Perplex. So there's, there's another reality there. Uh, also, we have Cyborg. And Cyborg is giving us some nice damage. He's, he's really like the second guy that you might want to pop off, depending on your circumstances. Because Cyborg is giving us enhancement. So as long as we're doing ranged combat actions or attacks, Cyborg is useful. Because he just sits there and chills and says, hey man, let me power you up a little bit. Um, I don't really like that, just because that's not what Cyborg really does. But in, anyway... The other thing is, is that if we're on experience dial, he has Psychic Blast and Perplex, which means that he can up his attack to a 10 and make it reasonable. Uh, now, some of you might say, well, Changeling gives your team base shape change. I'm like, well, mm, evasion really isn't all that great when you look at the options. And really, he's one of the characters that we're still questionable on where his flexibility comes in. And, and how we're going to, to, to use him. So so really what we've noticed is where are our three main characters out of the seven so far? Uh, Cyborg, Wonder Girl, and Star Sapphire. So these are the main core characters that we're going to look at our offense. The next thing that we need to look at is points. If I'm rolling points, I can only have characters on Solo Adventure equal to and cannot exceed the cost of the team base. So the next thing I'm looking at is like, wow, I got, you know, Wonder Girl who comes in at a very expensive uh, point value at, at 115. Then I have Star Sapphire who comes in at 137. Hold up, I looked at the wrong Wonder Girl. That's not 115. It's 135. Sorry, 135. Yeah, let's uh, look at the wrong Wonder Girl. They had too many Wonder Girls in this set, which, anyway, uh, go, I digress, um, but, ah, oh, shoot, I closed the little window. Oh, well, but uh, you have Wonder Girl coming in at a ridiculous amount of points, and and you're sort of stuck, like, eh, you know, what am I to do? You know, so you're, you're going to have to balance off between what's more important, if you're on the rookie or experience level, that range game or that melee game. Then you start looking at, okay, who's really cheap that can help me out? So on your cheap end, and this is one thing I do also like about most of the team-based designs, there's always these cheap guys on here that are utter and total crap, like by themselves. But they, they do some niche thing that allows you to just guarantee that they're, them being off the base is useful. Usually their asset power is mediocre at best and that's the part I like so in our case with Teen Titans that's like the opposite so like Robin is our outwit but if we pop him off on like the rookie level we can pop him off at 50 points which means that we can have him 
and we also can have a rookie level flash okay we can have a rookie level flash and we can have Starfire or uh, Wonder Girl out or we can have Kid Flash Robin and we can have Cyborg out okay so that's that's really awesome alright now one thing that might seem you know really tempting to do at, at the rookie level is to have like Starfire and Cyborg and Robin out and that that's not bad that's that's not bad at all um, as long as we can get 50 point yeah I think it is going to be 50 point Robin yeah it's going to be 50 point Robin it has to be so that puts us at <clears throat> excuse me that puts us at 290 okay so that little three um, figure team gives us uh, a lot of flexibility because we're we're able to, to manipulate multiple elements now again what are we doing at that rookie level okay Robin is trying to take the place of Wonder Girl okay because of the close combat expert so we're just going to place Robin right there close combat expert uh, because trying to block line of fire with the stealth figure that's a the very situational um, thing the next thing is is that Starfire at the rookie level does ridiculous damage and she still has charge and but she still helps us with that range gain then Cyborg he has enhancement and running shot so we have we have a but his range is yeah it's okay so we have uh, a, a range a long range gain a mid range gain and then we have a close combat gain okay so so we can look at a combination like that okay or if we want to say uh, Teen Titan Swarm we can look at Robin Kid Flash um, also Changeling and um, let me see I think I'm and I'm I'm just guessing right now I think Raven will fit so yeah yeah we're what well, we can do that so we can run Robin Kid Flash Changeling and uh, Raven uh, for our 300 point dial and it's just swarming four guys on the field just because now I don't think that's smart at all um, and I don't think that they have any sort of synergy whatsoever but if you're just like man screw it just need to get guys out there um, to jack with my opponent uh, you can go ahead and do that but I don't think it's the best so overall I, I hope you you sort of see like the breakdown of alright I need this figure to solve for this my team base is a delivery system for these other things my asset dial allows me to do you know K uh, J and and W okay but I need to make sure that I'm I'm looking at that uh, you can try to roll and roll and roll and get whatever you get but you, the asset dial after the first click is a non-dependable resource. Okay, so uh, with with that sort of general lesson of like this is how you you break it down. Um, this is how you break down a resource. Uh, uh, and sorry, not break down a resource. Break down a team base and the resources in the team base. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the current meta and now. Uh, and how that this this analysis will impact your gameplay first and foremost the thing that you need to be really aware of if you're playing a team base is what is your plan and I, I really do mean that it's like what is your plan because the idea of like I'm gonna play push that team base down and then I'm gonna you know do you know buckets load of damage no no that that's dumb and and there's a reason why that's dumb because your opponent has all sorts of advantages in actions 
and also in stat manipulation for your point values that you're coming in at for low point values high point values it doesn't matter your opponent has way more options than you do okay and and here's where I'll put it like this the power plant currently is equivalent is like a mid ground between a resource and an asset dial except you control it hear me again the power plant is a mid ground between a resource and an asset dial except you control it you can't control a resource dial or an asset dial to land on what you want you can ch chance upon it but you cannot control it okay so you need to have a game plan and you also need to say in your team building and, and this is where my my strong belief lies at this point if you are going to be playing a team base you need to do it in which you can put other characters on that team a team base alone is is no moss like so but yeah like you're you're asking for trouble you're asking for so much trouble and and also someone tell hunter that the Shi'ar imperial guard is not 600 points you know they cap out at 500 i'm just messing with hunter but i just <laughs> he keeps saying it's 600 I man, I'm so glad it's not 600. Anyway, so like let's let's take for example my Shi'ar Imperial Guard team, the Landra, a Pog Shi'ar Imperial Guard with the Bat Signal. Now, uh, I'll with that combination, you can say like, oh wow, that's really strong, and it abuses uh, these mechanics and these mechanics, and you you can all that's obvious. But the first things first. Shi'ar Imperial Guard are not fighting alone. That's that's the main thing. The second thing to think about is that Shi'ar Imperial Guard has some has a character on there, which is Lelandra, which boosts all the characters that pop off. Oh wow! A lot of folks didn't think about that. <laughs> like Lelandra buffs every single one of those little babies that come off of the Imperial Guard doesn't matter what level it is so you're almost getting uh, the previous uh, level if, if you've taken massive damage for free so that's that's something to look at okay uh, you have a character or you have a team base um, that is like X-Men uh, blue or gold strike force let's take gold strike force because I like them and I have them and I still have yet to play them in a competitive environment, which is really sad, considering that I have all the figures for it. Um, if you look at X-Men, X-Men really needs a couple of things. The, the first thing that it needs is uh, a character that sort of would act like Oracle, that would allow them to move their, their half their movement for free, or at least give them sidestep. Okay, another thing that would be nice if there was a character that gave them just, you know, upfront energy shield deflection. Now, some of you would say, hey, that's that's not right. You know, you, you don't need energy shield deflection. You know, like, no, you need energy shield deflection because this is a run and gun team. Just look at their dial. It's at the end that you get charge. Okay, and if you're on charge, you're already in trouble. Okay. You you're already in trouble. If you're using poison, you're doing it wrong. Okay, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. I mean, in most situations. So anyway, going on. Uh, the next thing that you're going to notice is that when you when you break them down, and I'm going to click X Men. When you when you break them down, you're looking at the team base as your major muscle and the other characters sort of supplementing that muscle and I'm gonna I'm gonna really show you that you need like they need support okay so you got um, 
this is awesome because you have two Jean Grays that you can use. And I recommend that everyone use uh, the Jean Gray from the Fast Forces. Don't use the freaking 40 point Jean Gray. That's dumb. That's so dumb. Don't, don't, don't. And I, and again, it's not meant to be like, you're. I'm insulting you. But really, if you have access to the 100 point one, you are just getting 60 points for free when you play her. Now, note, if you're playing at the 300 point level, you you're you're putting yourself in a little bit of a tough position, um, just mainly because um, she is a hundred points and she takes up a lot more. So you might want to think at the at the 300 point level, you might not want to play. Uh, yeah, you, you might not want to play uh, the 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 fast forces uh, Jean Grey, but. She is awesome, though. <laughs> oh gosh, she's so awesome. But anyway, the rookie level, you you're coming at 170, and then your experience level, uh, you're coming in at at 270, and then your vet level, you're coming in at 470. So you're you're capping at 500. So 500, 300, 200. So the same points as the Imperial Guard. Um. So that's. That's something to think about uh, as well. Anyway, sort of going back if my stuff wouldn't stop lagging. Uh, they need help. They need a lot of help. And the main goal, a main thing that they need help with is just making sure that the damage sticks. And more so than the damage sticking, that they're able to get sort of in and out as best as possible. They are a massive stick and move uh piece. Okay, so that and I'm and I'm taking the stick and move philosophy from uh push to regen. Okay. So when when you look at them and you're like, okay, am I going to build theme? Well these bad boys don't have any sort of cool stuff on their asset dial that gives them prop. Okay. So that for a fact you know if I have prob on the side that might be nice okay so that's that's one thing now you can say well if I go theme then I can have prob and I can have prob on my team base well that's pretty good but also who are you pairing them with and what are they going to do to help you out so I would say it's better off for you to have some something that would you know benefit you like gizmo so that you can get psychic blast or even prob that way then it is just for you to just say like oh i'm just gonna put some random x-men on the team okay and then you can say like oh well um i know that i'm going to always pop off um let's just say uh colossus because you don't like because you, you, well, let's say you're always going to say, I'm going to pop off Colossus. Well, Colossus is nice on his vet level, but his attack is moderate. And then he has Empower, which only helps us with melee attacks. Well, guess what? If we're playing X-Men Gold Team, we shouldn't be doing melee attacks. All right. Uh, but then you can say, well, hey, you know, Dark Logos, what about the other characters on the team? Couldn't they benefit? from the empower why yes they could if we supplemented uh that character uh from outside of the team base so we like oh yeah we're gonna play vet level uh x-men gold oh, okay who else can we put on the team that would benefit uh well uh let's say husk husk damage value is very low so she would benefit from colossus Okay, so we're doing pairing. It's like, okay, what what on my team base is useful? Okay, let's look at Sunspot. Sunspot is very cheap. And he starts off with super strength. Well, Empower would be very nice for Sunspot. Okay? So, let's let's look at um Storm. Storm has that whole uh lightning uh attenuation. When Storm makes a ranged combat attack, her range uh, her damage value is replaced with 9 minus the number of squares to the closest target character, maximum 4. 
and she has printed one damage the entire time. So, with the eight range, that's not bad. Um, what can we say uh, would be very beneficial? Well, considering that at her max range, she's not doing that much damage, but at close range, she's doing a good amount of damage uh, for 107 points. Maybe, just maybe, we should get enhancement. So, since it's a replacement value, it can still be modified. So that base 4 can technically go up to 7. And, oh, look! Right after our first click on our experience dial, we get Running Shot and Psychic Blast. Alright, so you can start to see that if, if you really look at pairing figures um, in addition to the team base and the characters on the team base, that you can start doing broken stuff. That you, you're, you're able to fully maximize your points. And, and looking at this storm, for example, a lot of people just sleep on her, but... Uh, she really needs enhancement and she really needs a perplex and if you're able to get either one of those two things or both of those things she becomes ridiculous she becomes really ridiculous um, if you look at Archangel you might say well hey I can pair Archangel and Colossus together and that's true you can so that's an option for you to think about as well um, but Archangel, yeah. uh, Archangel, I keep feeling like I'm getting hosed compared to the old Ar uh, Archangel, but that's just me. Anyway, uh, going on. So, you know, take your time and, and look at what you can put with your your team base to make them better because they they're not self-sufficient they have glaring holes when you look at it and and X-Men's gold's biggest glaring hole is that they only can target one character uh, for an attack which really really sucks for them alright so we, we looked at you know hey the how do I look at the team base and you know break it down and, and see what it's offering and then we looked at, okay, you know, how does the team bases apply right now in the meta? And the best option that we just sort of concluded is that you, you need to, you can't play the team base alone. It needs backup. If, if you are, and I'll, I'll add this caveat, if you are playing a team base alone, there are only two team bases, three team bases. No, I'll take that back. There are four team bases in the meta right now as I record that I feel that you can play by themselves in a non-theme situation. Actually, no, there's three. In a non-theme situation. Because I was going to say New Mutants. But New Mutants is only good because you're able to put in support. You're able to add in other things. Um, and actually, actually, I'll take that back. New Mutants team base is support. And you're able to add in other stuff to help you. Um... So, the first is the first is Hellfire Club, and Hellfire Club is way stronger than some people care to admit, and it has way more options than people admit, and because of that, it can surprise people. It can surprise people ridiculous for, for with the ridiculous things that they can do and and here's the one thing with the hellfire club that people forget um and is that the hellfire club when you were fighting it at 300 points it is on its top dial so it's a vet and you have to go through 16 clicks Plus, they, they have access to, like, Mastermind and other stuff. That's why it is ridiculous, ridiculous for what it can do. Now, the only problem comes in is that everybody on that team base, minus White Queen, is ridiculously expensive. Like, just, I mean, click, click Hellfire Club, and then you'll see, like, um, Black King... 
is 165 and black king is really only good on your rookie level but here's the problem on your rookie level uh, you are 80 points you can't break him off so you have to play him on your vet dial and get beat up and then break off black king okay then um, who else where is she black queen is awesome for pretty much everything that she does because unlike the I have to we'll have to see how it gets ruled because she's a vampire I don't know if they're gonna let her keep healing um, up to higher clicks I don't think so considering that you know they're treating the 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 breakoff points as starting lines but here's sort of wondering because she it, it becomes weird it, it, it just becomes weird and that's where the rules are are gonna have to come in and say like you know yay or nay so anyway uh, Hellfire Club Gar uh, Hellfire Club Inner Circle is, is just strong they have a lot of options White King is the perfect mastermind fodder and they have stealth they have uh, they they have so many options uh that it's a little bit silly they can push to get uh psychic blast so there's there's very little that they can't do um in terms of like offense okay uh the other in in the meta that i feel that can sort of stand on its own is uh she are Imperial Guard, and the main reason is is that she are Imperial Imperial Guard can drop one figure off of his team base uh, and play the uh, bat signal and just ruin someone's day at at three hundred points. Like just just ruin it. They don't have any requirement where they need to have everybody on the base to do something awesome no they're just like we are boss you know welcome to the jungle I'm no it's not even welcome to the jungle welcome to space where no one can hear you scream as I beat the ever-living daylights out of you like yeah that's that's pretty much what they can do and their their 300 point dial is it's nasty it's it's not as sick as their their vet dial but you have to look at it like this if you're able to to teleport in and land that flurry on and this is like four damage and then I think you have the drill coordination that modify Shi'ar Imperial Guard's attack value by plus one for each opposing character hit by Shi'ar Imperial Guard uh, earlier this turn so if you teleport up and then flurry and hit that second flurry you have 11 attack so it's it's just something to think about um anyway they 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 have a lot of stuff on their team base and just getting gladiator period like you don't even turn past gladiator like just having gladiator period is sick and then just to say mm, yeah I summon off gladiator so you you actually have to fight like 400 points of just monstrous oh gosh it's 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 just wrong I I, I, I don't really say that often but it's it it is wrong you shouldn't be able to do that and I know you're not getting psychic blast gladiator you're you're getting Pasha charge 11 attack uh, in in uh, the, I was about to say invulnerable invincible and three damage oh my gosh I can pick up a heavy yeah so and power cosmic and yeah there's yeah and oh yeah smasher can be my medic if I need it so I can summon war star and I can summon smasher and so you can you can sort of see where I'm I'm at like they can be played by themselves and if you do turn one you know summon off like a character like smasher 
you can just be like, oh, yeah, uh, you're not going to get to the other side of the map. And when it's my turn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teleport on the other side to where you're at. Actually, Smash is going to pick Perplex as his special power. I'm going to Perplex up my attack. I'm going to go on the other side of the map. I'm going to hit you twice. My second attack, I'll have a 12 attack. And then I'm going to be teleported back. And in that period of time, as you walk your crippled butt down the map, Smasher is going to uh, heal me uh, if I took mystic damage or anything else. And by the time you get here, I'll be cleared just enough for Smasher to hit Perplex again and for me to hypersonic uh, attack you in the face. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I hope you like the veal that I left you. And, that, and that's that's the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. The reason why you won't see most people do that is that they're still thinking um, Justice League is outclasses them. And to an extent, Justice League can if Justice League gets a stealth game going. But if, if Shi'ar says, screw that, I'm going to go body with you the entire time. There's very little Justice League can do. And if Justice League decides to match Spawn with Spawn, Shi'ar Spawn is way stronger because they're coming off on the experience level. And Justice League Spawn is coming off on the rookie level. I know Batman is, is OP. But all it takes is for the Shi'ar to say, Psh, hypersonic speed, I'm going to go kill Batman. He's not that deep. Perplex up his uh, perplex up um, the damage. Actually, no, just perplex up the attack and then go kill Batman. Problem solved. Hypersonic speed, yay! And they also get pulse wave and five damage. <laughs> it's dumb. So yeah, so the second one is Shi'ar Imperial Guard, and of course you can tell what the last one is is Justice League. And the main reason is Justice League doesn't have a wind up. The Justice League starts off and says screw you. <laughs> I'm stealth and I pick map and I'm going to hide. And oh yeah, uh, just to let you know uh, I am also going to have plus two range ignore all your evasion abilities and also have sharpshooter. Is that fine with you? Oh and I have perplex. Is that, that, that cool? You sure? Alright. Just, just letting you know. So, that is another element which the Justice League play properly can manage tempo way better than Shi'ar can. Um, just because of Batman and Wonder Woman. And, and I know some people want to say, like, what's your commentary about the Justice League? Wonder Woman is OP. How about that? The one character everyone ignored because everyone was looking at Green Lantern and Batman and even the Flash, Wonder Woman coming off that dial has been underestimated in every match that I played except one, and I lost. Because no one actually like literally looked at Wonder Woman until she picked up a heavy and whacked them for five damage. Like people don't think about that. They're they're like, well, what are you popping off Wonder Woman for? Like because she hits hard. That's why I pop Wonder Woman off. Uh, everything else is just like knowing when and why you have to put stuff out. And you can break down your your fodder into the following categories. Range attack, melee attack, support, and shenanigan. That's it. That's it. You need, You get to decide which do you want and why. You know... Batman is a shenanigan. Uh, Flash is support. Uh, Wonder Woman is melee attack. Um, Green Lantern is technically support. He's not really a good ranged attacker. Actually, Cyborg is a better ranged attacker technically. He can, he can generate more damage. Um, Batman is a ranged attacker. He's a mid-ranged attacker, but he's also a shenanigan. Uh, Aquaman, depending on your situation, can be a shenanigan, but you're never popping off Aquaman. Never popping off Aquaman. 
uh, Superman is is a ranged attacker shenanigan. So there there you have to know where your your pieces are lying at, and that's the one thing that I feel that makes the Justice League stronger slightly in some areas than the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. The Shi'ar Imperial Guard does not have a lot of shenanigans. The Shi'ar Imperial Guard just punches you really, really hard. Like, it just does. Like, their shenanigans are weak. Like, Manta is weak. Hussar is only there to really deal with freaking Absorbing Man. And, um... Yeah, Smasher is whatever you need him to be, but it, it costs you your damage reduction. And all the rest of your powers. So, you, you have to keep that in mind. But, Starbolt, MVP on vet level, Running Shot, Psychic Blast, Pulse Wave. She gets enhancement on uh, her rookie level and hypersonic speed and willpower. Yes, please. Seven range. Yes, please. I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, uh, working together, I'm going to pop off a rookie level uh, star bolt, and then I'm going to uh, ranged attack you. Oh, yeah, I get plus one damage. So, I mean, there there's a bunch of stuff there that I think between Justice League and uh, Shi'ar Imperial Guard, you have to figure out what you what's best for how you play and more importantly um, what sort of setup are you running because if you're looking to have them stand alone ooh ooh that's ooh you just yeah you're you're better off with Justice League over the, Shi the Shi'ar Imperial Guard um, just because you have more options with Justice League but it's a close fight. Like, Shi'ar Imperial Guard can just put up a freaking ridiculous fight. They put up a really ridiculous fight for what they can do. Uh, but uh, at the same time with me saying that, they have problems with the Silver Centurion teams. They have problems with uh, a, a lot of different things that are in the meta right now. Um, so, you know, it all comes down to how careful you are. If you're not looking at map, if you're not looking at your flow of battle, things I've talked about and tried to, you know, beat into people. Um, if you're if you're not looking at those things, team bases are so bad. They are so bad. You can build better stuff now. And with the power plant, like I said, you get the mid ground between a resource dial and an asset dial. So with that a very solid design team can take on a team base no problem so those are my thoughts I hope uh, you all appreciate that um, me going in depth on team bases I know some of you might be saying like what about blah 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 team base should I take that character off or should I keep it on or should I get this bonus or should I get that bonus the best thing that I can tell you is this look at your situation just look at your situation and say if I take this character off is what I'm losing but is it is it doesn't matter in comparison to what I'm gaining is what I'm gaining better than what I'm losing if so do it that's that's the simple that's the simple rule okay I'm going to lose this function but I gain them dying. I'm going to take that character off. Oh shoot, I take this character off. I lose all of my defensive abilities to what he's, he's, he has on the other side of the field. If I take him off, I might be able to KO a figure. Then, then don't take him off. Keep your, all your defensive abilities that's shutting him down. So, I, I hate to say it like this. This The team-based lesson is more like a lesson in being a Pokemon master. You can have a Snorlax and a Pikachu and a Charizard and all that. If you are a crappy trainer, won't matter. You're going to lose. Even, even though you have a Snorlax, a Charizard, and, and a super legendary Pikachu, 
if 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 you are Ash Ketchum and not Red, you're going to lose. And for those people who read Pokemon and know about Pokemon, they'll know what I mean. Uh, but so it it's up to your skill. And I'm not going to say blah 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 if you know noobs can't play team bases. <laughs> no, noobs can still play team bases. But noobs can't play team bases well. And if you have if you fight a team base and you have a a well thought out team with a lot of the core elements uh, on your team, you you will win against a noob. In, in an inexperienced player will not think about solo adventure. And if they when they finally do think about solo adventure, it's probably going to be after they lost a game. And then they're going to be struggling through solo adventure. Because they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to take a power action hypersonic speed and then I'm going to pop off uh, Flash or I'm going to pop off, um, let's say, Supergirl or something like that. I'm just making characters up. It's like, uh, no, you can't do that because hypersonic speed is a power action and work. I mean, sorry, uh, hypersonic speed is a power action and solo adventure is a power action. So, yeah. You can you can start to see like how tough it can be. Um, oh, last thing I will tell people: um, just overall lesson about team bases. Do your homework. Memorize dials. I haven't said that in the longest time, and I've sort of been anti-memorizing dials since there's so much stuff like out there um, that comes into the meta. But if you are going to play a team base memorize every single aspect of your dial so if you're playing it on a team based on experience level know all what all your characters can do on an experience level and what situations they're good in and what situations they're bad in if, if you're playing a, a vet level know from vet all the way down to rookie level you know what what is the best figure to pop off and who's the best at that stage because I'll tell you the truth there are characters out there on a team base that are crap at vet level, complete crap, and awesome at experience in vet. I mean, experience in rookie. And there's characters that are awesome at vet and rookie, but bad at experience, or characters that are just good at experience. And this is one part where I have to give WizKids credit because they didn't make it so that a character that pops off a team base, no matter what, is always good or is always bad. Um, but they, they offer different things at different points in the game, and that's the part that I really like. So you just can't be like, every situation I'm going to pop off Green Lantern, every situation I'm going to pop off Starbolt, every situation I'm going to pop off... No, every situation you got to pop off Gladiator. Gladiator is just too dang good. <laughs> Oh gosh! I, side note, and I know I, I need to wrap up the show. The funny thing is, Gladiator coming off a team base is way better than Superman. Just, just for the record. Anyway, so um, that's mainly it. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, if you want, uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, just with the stuff with uh, YouTube, um, I might be thinking about other platform options like Vimo or something else. I don't know yet. I don't I don't know if I'm going to go down that route. Um but I will not lie to you and and say that the option is not there. Uh I just don't want to migrate everything again because I lost a whole lot of viewers when I migrated from Blip. Like way more than I care to admit. Like I went from 500 to 600 views on an opening day on blip and when I moved to YouTube I was lucky to get 10 so yeah um, so I, I might not do that just yet um, but it is there just so that I can get my music back uh, anyway so you can follow me on Twitter uh, at start over pod it came from outer space and told me the wisdom of team bases which I shared to you and about uh, how they work in the meta uh, you can 
find out if I have a blog post or anything interesting on Twitter and also various musings and ramblings uh, about my life or about hero clicks or about uh, whatever else. Uh, you can email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it awesome. Uh, I've gotten tons of questions about team bases. Uh, so <laughs> if you have more questions about team bases, feel free to ask. Um, but hopefully I feel that this uh, this episode is a very thorough primer in about in, in how to analyze and look at team bases for play. Uh, last but not least, you can check out the blog starting over podcast.blogspot.com. Uh, if you go there, you can see the donate button. Uh, you can donate to the show, and uh, it will all the money goes to making the show better, uh, better equipment, better sound quality, better sound card, all, you know, and also prizes. So uh, that is also there. So um, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening. Uh, I really appreciate your patience with this ultra-long show. Uh, So, uh, again, thanks for listening. And remember, uh, we all have to start over sometime.